Microsoft has a new LLM coming that many are taking as direct competition to OpenAI. Does this mean something about the OpenAI-Microsoft relationship has changed, or is it all just much ado about nothing? Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. For a while now, the AI industry has been closely watching the evolving relationship between Microsoft and OpenAI. There have been some big questions about whether Microsoft is over that relationship, just trying to hedge their bets, or going in fundamentally different directions. The latest saga in this story comes with reports about MAI-1. The information writes, meet MAI-1, Microsoft Ready's new AI model to compete with Google and OpenAI. So let's see what this model is, what the community's take on all this is, and what it means for this relationship in the long run. The information writes, For the first time since it invested more than $10 billion into OpenAI in exchange for the rights to reuse the startup's AI models, Microsoft is training a new in-house AI model large enough to compete with state-of-the-art models from Google, Anthropic, and OpenAI itself. Now, they go on to write that the model is internally being referred to as MAI-1 and is being overseen by Mustafa Suleiman. Now, that's notable because the last time that we were having this conversation about Microsoft and OpenAI was when Microsoft hired the majority of the startup inflection, as well as paying $650 million for the rights to its IP. It was an acquisition in anything but name. Mustafa was, of course, not only the CEO and founder of Inflection, but before that, he had been one of the co-founders of DeepMind, who sold that company to Google. It felt to some like Suleiman and Inflection were being hired into the role that had for a time during the whole Sam Altman saga been where Altman himself might be headed. Remember, when Altman was fired as CEO, for a moment it appeared that he would be heading to Microsoft to lead a new AI division there. Obviously, that's not how that situation played out, but it seems in retrospect like either A, Microsoft had already had a plan like that, or B, they liked the idea so much that even after Altman went back to OpenAI, they decided to go through with it as well. Now, as for MAI-1, the information says that this is not a model that's carried over from inflection, that it is instead a homegrown Microsoft model. According to sources, MAI-1 will have roughly 500 billion parameters, as opposed to GPT-4's estimated more than 1 trillion parameters, but a lot more than other open source models like Meta and Mistral's 70 billion parameters. The information's analysis is this. That means Microsoft is now pursuing a dual strategy of sorts in AI, aiming to develop both small language models that are inexpensive to build into apps and that could run on mobile devices alongside larger state-of-the-art AI models. The last note from the report is that Microsoft has been setting aside a large cluster of servers with NVIDIA GPUs, as well as compiling training data. So what do the community think? Well, Bindu Reddy from Abacus writes, As I predicted, Microsoft is training its own LLM. It's called MAI-1, a 500 billion parameter model, and may be previewed at their build conference. When this model becomes available, it will only be natural for Microsoft to push this instead of the GPT line. As predicted, OAI and Microsoft are becoming more and more competitive. Any which way, LLMs have become a commodity. Andrew Curran writes, there have been indications for some time that Microsoft was intending to take their own path. And we're planning to train a bespoke model to compete with GPT-4. We now have a name, MAI-1. Microsoft, for their part, tried to tamp down the idea that this was somehow representative of a change in their relationship with OpenAI. Kevin Scott, the CTO of Microsoft, wrote, I'm not sure why this is news, but just to summarize the obvious, we build big supercomputers to train AI models. Our partner OpenAI uses these supercomputers to train frontier-defining models. And then we both make these models available in products and services so that lots of people can benefit from them. We rather like this arrangement. We've been at it for almost five years now. Each supercomputer we build for OpenAI is a lot bigger than the one that preceded it, and each frontier model they train is a lot more powerful than its predecessors. We will continue to be on this path, building increasingly powerful supercomputers for OpenAI to train the models that will set the pace for the whole field well into the future. There's no end in sight to the increasing impact that our work together will have. We also, for years and years and years, have built AI models in Microsoft, in MSR, and in our product groups. AI models turn out to be interesting things to work on, and our researchers do great work studying and building them. AI models are used in almost every one of our products, services, and operating processes at Microsoft, and the teams making and operating things on occasion need to do their own custom work, whether that's training a model from scratch or fine-tuning a model that someone else has built. There will be more of this in the future, too. Some of these models have names like Turing and MAI. Some, like Phi, for instance, we even open source. I know the way I've said it isn't all that dramatic, but it is reality, and it's a plenty exciting reality for all us geeks given how hard all of this is to do in practice. So basically, the argument here is that just because Microsoft is working on other models doesn't mean that it doesn't like OpenAI's models or its partnership with OpenAI. It just has other uses and other needs for building other models. There's also been some interesting stuff coming out recently about how the relationship got started, specifically the involvement of Bill Gates. For example, a recent article reads, In 2017, just before Microsoft forged a partnership with a then-relatively unknown startup called OpenAI, Bill Gates shared a memo with CEO Satya Nadella and a small group of the company's top executives. 
a new world order Gates predicted would soon be brought on by what he called AI agents, digital personal assistants that could anticipate our every want and need. These agents would be far more powerful than Siri and Alexa with godlike knowledge and supernatural intuition. Gates wrote, Agents are not only going to change how everyone interacts with computers, they're also going to upend the software industry, bringing about the biggest revolution in computing since we went from typing commands to tapping on icons. Business Insider went on, Publicly, Gates has been almost entirely out of the picture at Microsoft since 2021. In fact, Gates has been quietly orchestrating much of Microsoft's AI revolution from behind the scenes. Current and former executives say Gates remains intimately involved in the company's operations, advising on strategy, reviewing products, recruiting high-level executives, and nurturing Microsoft's crucial relationship with Sam Altman. One Microsoft executive said, What you read is not what's happening in reality. Satya and the entire senior leadership team lean on Gates very significantly. His opinion is sought every time we make a major change. Another email that recently came out was one from CTO Kevin Scott, who we just heard from. It was from June 12, 2019. It was addressed to Satya Nadella and Bill Gates and was called Thoughts on OpenAI. Kevin writes, The thing that's interesting about what OpenAI and DeepMind and Google Brain are doing is the scale of their ambition, and how that ambition is driving everything from data center design to compute silicon to networks and distributed systems architectures to numerical optimizers, compilers, programming frameworks, and the high-level abstractions that model developers have at their disposal. When all these programs were doing was competing with one another to see which RL system could achieve the most impressive game-playing stunt, I was highly dismissive of their efforts. That was a mistake. When they took all of the infrastructure that they had built to build NLP models that we couldn't easily replicate, I started to take things more seriously. And as I dug in to try to understand where all the capability gaps were between Google and us for model training, I got very, very worried. As Bloomberg summed up, Microsoft's motivation for investing heavily in partnering with OpenAI came from a sense of falling badly behind Google. Said Scott in the email, we are multiple years behind the competition in terms of machine learning scale. Satya Nadella endorsed Scott's email, forwarding it to Chief Financial Officer Amy Hood and saying it explains, quote, why I want us to do this. Darrell Bossinger writes, both the competitive awareness to understand how far ahead Google was and the realization that Microsoft's Bing teams would not be able to compete without help are great. So of course the question becomes, have things changed so fundamentally in five years that Microsoft no longer feels behind? Semi-analysis explored this in a piece today called OpenAI is doomed, question mark? E2 Microsoft? In it, they discuss the changing landscape of compute resources, the new emergence of models from China that are cheaper to run and highly performant. And then there's a section they have called, Is Microsoft Even Committed? They write, Microsoft is spending over $10 billion in CapEx directly for OpenAI, but they are not directing most of their GPU capacity to OpenAI. The majority of Microsoft's planned over $50 billion annual spend on AI data centers is going to internal workloads. Much of this has been inference to deploy OpenAI models in their own products and services, but that's changing. Microsoft is forced into looking for contingency plans because of OpenAI's bizarre structure. OpenAI is a nonprofit whose primary goal is creating artificial general intelligence that is safe and benefits all of humanity. OpenAI can and will break the agreement that enables Microsoft to have access to OpenAI's model with zero recourse from Microsoft. And then they quote an OpenAI document that reads, While our partnership with Microsoft includes a multi-billion dollar investment, OpenAI remains an entirely independent company governed by the OpenAI nonprofit. Microsoft is a non-voting board observer and has no control. AGI is explicitly carved out of all commercial and IP licensing agreements. The board determines when we've attained AGI. Again, by AGI, we mean a highly autonomous system that outperforms humans at most economically valuable work. Such a system is excluded from IP licenses and other commercial terms with Microsoft, which only apply to pre-AGI technology. As semi-analysis continues, the most worrisome thing for Microsoft here is that OpenAI's board can decide at any moment, with no voting input whatsoever from Microsoft, that they have achieved AGI and Microsoft is not entitled to the IP that was created with their investment dollars. When you stack that on top of the massive governance issues OpenAI already has related to their nonprofit and for-profit arms, Microsoft must put a contingency plan in place. The semi-analysis authors then draw the line between a bunch of internal initiatives leading all the way to MAI-1. They call it Microsoft's first big effort at hitting GPT-4 class, and say that the goal is to have their own in-house from scratch GPT-4 class model by the end of this month. So what to make of all of this? With no knowledge whatsoever of what's actually going on behind the scenes, it seems to me like everything is kind of right. What I mean by that is that I don't think that Kevin Scott is putting on a show of saying that they continue to plan to have a great relationship with OpenAI for years to come. I think that relationship has been extremely profitable for them. I think they see a lot of potential in it. I think that they believe that OpenAI has some secret sauce that keeps them ahead of the curve. So I take all of what he said in that LinkedIn post at face value. At the same time, I also think that that semi-analysis analysis is correct. The simple fact of having this AGI clause in the deal terms means that Microsoft can't rely on that relationship forever. And what's more, they've seen how quickly and how seemingly capriciously the OpenAI board can act. 
It's not surprising then that even if they are not wishing for a breakup with OpenAI, they are hedging their bets more aggressively since the end of last year. Anyways, it is a fascinating time. It will continue to be a fascinating time, and I will be here to tell you all about it as it happens. For now, however, that is going to do it for the AI Daily Brief. Until next time, peace.